Steve Burns, there's been a lot of talk about drones lately. The FAA recently cleared your company, Workhorse, to test truck-to-home drone delivery. Can you tell me where you're at? Good. Thanks. We, uh, we got what's called a 333 exemption by the FAA. Uh, I think it's just us and Google have, have received that. So drone, they've given a lot of exemptions to drones that do camera work, which is kind of the typical thing for drone. But when you deliver, you know, you come down into Peopleville, and that's a whole another set of, uh, of variables. So the, the main thing that the FAA is doing is they're kind of easing, easing the, into this is they'd like a, somebody eyeballing it. So they have what's called line of sight restriction. So uh, let's say an Amazon has famously come out and said, you know, our goal is you click and 30 minutes later from our warehouse, a drone flies maybe 20 or 30 miles out to the suburbs and then back. That obviously isn't line of sight. But, you know, you think about delivery trucks and kind of the ubiquitous nature of them. They're, at any given moment in time, they're everywhere. So to jump off that truck maybe a mile or two, uh, have a driver in the vicinity, and, and right now even have a driver watch it, you know, that, that is something, that's the way you ease into something. So we've been testing every day since they gave us the exemption. Well, the FAA is also uh, talking about easing its restriction on the personal use of drones. Can you talk, tell me when you think the promise of drones will be fulfilled? Right. So currently, all commercial use of drones in the United States is prohibited. So they're easing out these exemptions to kind of get some test data. But hobbyists are allowed to do it. You can get it under your Christmas tree and you're out flying. You know, no restrictions virtually. So some, but most hobbyists don't know them. So the FAA, I think it's just gone through the first draft through the House. They have for six years been trying to, to regulate this. And it's an interesting thing. When technology is outrunning regulatory, I mean, this technology is flying. And to see regulatory trying to keep up. And they're trying to balance, balance safety with not letting America get too far behind. So general, general thinking is this year. All right. Well, Long. your majority of your business is the, the electric truck business. And right. you uh, just signed a deal to sell, uh, I think it's UPS, 125 right. trucks. Yep. Can you talk about the genesis of that deal and where that's going to lead? Yep. So UPS, really kind of being at the forefront of it, uh, they bought two trucks from us a year ago, put those into test, put them right into the route, and uh, they did well, did perfectly. Um, so they bought 125 of them. Now, 125 doesn't seem like that big of the order in the scheme of things, but it is the largest electric truck order ever. So um, it's, it's exciting, and, and we just started delivering those. And then what about the postal uh, service? You're also competing for a, uh, a yep. deal with them. Where are you on that? Yeah. We announced a while ago that we, um, we were a finalist. They've kind of got a short list of, of companies, and we continue to iterate through their process. But... It is going to be the largest automotive transaction in the history of the planet. All right, so how do your electric trucks differ from Tesla and what Tesla's doing with electric cars? Yeah. Um, well, essentially, we are the kind of a Tesla of trucks, right? These tend to be large 20,000 pound trucks, but essentially they are a, uh, a battery and a motor. We do an option that Tesla does not use. We use the same batteries. We use Panasonic. Um, cylindrical cells. We just announced that uh, the other day. So that really gives people confidence, right? That these are the same batteries in a Tesla. Tesla's proven that these work. We, though, um, we don't have a charging network all around the world like, like Tesla's trying to do. So we put a little generator, just a little two-cylinder, so a tiny little motorcycle engine in this large truck, and if the battery ever gets low, it will kick in automatically. So for a fleet guy, you've got to say the show will always go on. If you're working until 10 at Christmas, you know, it's an extra long day, you'll always get back. Understood. And then finally, uh, for Workhorse, do you plan to raise any more money? Because you're competing with the likes of Amazon for delivery uh, and other major truck makers in the nation. Uh, yeah. You're much smaller than them. Much. <laughs> and, you know, this, this last mile delivery that, that a lot of people have looked at, especially e-commerce guys saying, you know, we have to do this better, less expensive, quicker, even next day isn't fast enough now, right? So as all these entities kind of push, but, and we're a truck company, which is very capital intensive, but we just uh, rang the bell on the NASDAQ yesterday. We have enough to fund our operation, but, you know, in this type of business, uh, I think it's very t fair to say we'll probably be raising money. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on, Steve. Thanks, man. Thanks. And thank you for watching The Street.